Hey guys, Skrull here. Today I'm going to take a look at Space Engineers. What is Space Engineers? Well, it's a bit of a space setting for a construction game. Think of it like Lego Space, but with realistic physics. At the moment it is pure sandbox construction. You can build constructs such as this. This is a pre-built space station that comes with the game. But this gives you an idea of the kind of things that you can build. Now this game is on Steam. It's an alpha early access. The developers are asking for a lot of feedback because they want to know what direction to take this game in. You can be a part of that if you buy the game. You can then go onto the forums and you can help shape the future of the game. Now that is one of the wonderful things about the way indie early access games are going. We the players can actually feed back to the developers and help to construct the game. And I really recommend you do that, because this game, even as it stands, is a lot of fun. You can build space stations with it, and you can build spaceships with it. Small spaceships and large spaceships. This is a small spaceship, we're looking at it here. The space stations are, in essence, immovable. The spaceships are something that you can actually get inside and fly. There is destruction in this game. If you impact one thing into another, pieces will fly off. Bits will break and snap, and uh, you can render your spaceship quite immovable. Now some of the components you get at the moment are things like energy reactors, uh, lights, thrusters, uh, feet. You get various shapes of uh, components you can use, anything from rectangles to sloped pieces. And you can slot them together, and I'll show you how to do that later. The game is actually, interestingly enough, moddable. That's going to make it... I think something pretty big uh, a little bit like Kerbal Spacecraft this game is probably going to get extended because of the modding community but just off the bat this game sold a hundred thousand copies in three weeks which for an early access alpha is pretty amazing I would say if, I'll show you what you can do now you can get inside your spaceship you walk up to it the cockpit and you press T which will take you inside now you can either play this game in third or first first person. If you press V, it will change your view. Now we're back in first person. Press V, it goes back to third person. From that you can scroll with the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Hold down the Alt key and you can change the camera. Now if you see the feet are currently green because they're mag locked onto the floor. If we press P, that releases them. And then when we start to press the forward key, you'll see the rear thrusters start to operate. We fly out of this space station and spin around. You'll see the lighting, the graphics, even the physics are pretty high quality. This uses a, an engine called V-Rage 2.0. It's the first game to use this thing. It, it stands for voxel rendering or something like that. But you can see that the shadows are being cast in real time. Pretty good. The spaceships generally like this one here will auto stabilize because they have stabilizers on them if I let go of all the keys you can see immediately this gyro stabilizers come into force they operate the thrusters for you and stabilize the craft so if I press forward and then let go of forward key the stabilizer will automatically thrust in the opposite direction to bring us to a standstill that can be quite useful but all the stabilizers can be turned off and I'll show you that how to do that later you can build some pretty neat things with this game. We bring on the HUD by pressing the tab key. You can see on the right though we've got some stats about the mass and the speed, how much power the reactors are producing, how much power is being used and so on and so forth. It is a heavily physics based game so you can expect a fair degree of realism out of it when you build things. But as I said before at the moment there's no point to the game other than the art of construction for the sake of construction. So it's a little bit like Kerbal Spacecraft in the way that it used to be just pure construction and has now recently started to bring in missions. This game has nothing but construction. Nevertheless, if you actually go onto the forums you can see some pretty amazing creations that people have made. So how do you actually build your own spacecraft? Well, let me take you through some of the basics of doing that now. Before we start to learn about spacecraft let's talk about some of the basics of the spaceman and how to move them around. You can see down the bottom right there there is no gravity at the moment. 
Gravity is not acting in any direction. If I actually turn the thrusters off by pressing the X key, nothing happens. However, if I press the W key and move forward, as I get near this spaceship, you can see that as we enter its gravity field, we now see a direction for the gravity. So if I turn the thrusters, my, my own jetpack off by pressing X, I will immediately start to fall due to gravity. Press X and turn it back on again. WASD keys work as you would expect. A and D, W and S, forward and backwards. And then Q and E will rotate us. Now pay attention to the gravity when you do this. There is no concept of up in space. There is just a direction of gravity. So it's quite feasible for us to orient ourselves upside down. And when we turn our jetpack off, we'll fall upwards. <laughs> Which can be quite take quite a bit of getting used to if you're not used to space in that respect. Let's back out of the gravity field though. And let's start to build our own spaceship. Now the way you do this, you press G which brings up your toolbar. Now on your toolbar you have three options, a new small ship, a new large ship and a new station. Each of these three buttons will start with the very first or root component of your space spaceship or space station. You must have this. Every piece that you build must be connected to an existing piece so you have to start with something. So let's build a small ship. If we click new small ship you can see we start with our very first piece which is here. The main difference between a small ship and a big ship is the size of the components that you then build. The game's smart enough to know that as you start to build pieces off this because this is a small ship core it will start to build small pieces. However, there are some restrictions. Some pieces are only available on the small ship and or the large ship. The next thing to note is your toolbar, which is down here. Now your toolbar can have up to nine items on it. This is your pallet. This is what you can drag from here onto your toolbar. So when you press the G key, you're left with your toolbar. Notice the toolbar has numbers one to nine or zero on it. If you press zero, you get back to empty hand. If I was to press one, I will now have a light armor block. And as, as I approach the root component, you can see I can now start to build off it like so. There are some useful tricks to this. If you was to hold down the control key and then click, as you start to drag, it will drag a number of pieces and it will show you the number it's gonna build, which is quite handy. That way you can get yourself symmetrical components or asymmetrical components, however you want it. The root component is actually not relevant. So once we've started to build it, once we start to build our ship, it really doesn't matter anymore. The other thing to note that is if you press control and space together, when you start to build this time, you will get an area instead of just a line as you did with the control key like that. So you can start to see you can build things quite quickly using the control and the shift key. Starting to look familiar. <laughs> Looks like a tuning fork. Right, so what do you need in order to build a spaceship? Well, some of the things you're going to need are a cockpit, a power generator, and optionally a gravity field. You will also need thrusters to allow you to move and gyro stabilizers to help you to stabilize the ship. When you build the cockpit, the cockpit defines the orientation of the actual spacecraft. So if you press G key, you can notice down here that number two is our actual cockpit, cockpit component. So if you press number two, we'll get a cockpit. Now, because we actually want to fly in this direction, like this, I'm going to build it here. If you press zero now, we'll go back to having an empty hand. Now you can see that is actually off center. It is always better to build spaceships symmetrically 
because you'll find that they're much, much easier to balance later. So what I'm going to do is, if I right click, that will destroy blocks, like so. And then I'm going to extend it. That way, I now have a symmetrical construct. Incidentally, spacebar will take you up and C will take you down. And that is how you fly around your spaceship. Now, there's the cockpit at the front. Obviously, we're going to want some thrusters at the back here. But if you do not put thrusters in all directions, then your spacecraft will not be able to operate in all directions. So if we press 4 to bring up the thrusters, now you'll see we have to actually orient components. So let's start at the back here. If I was to put that down, the thrusters moving in the wrong direction. Now, the way this works is the insert, delete, home, end, and page up, page down keys are the ones that will rotate a component before you put it down. If I was to press insert and delete, like that, you can see it will spin that component round. I can now put it onto the end here, like that. And when I fly back over here, I'll have to press the insert key again. to put the thrusters on. That is going to allow my spacecraft to move forward and backwards only. I will not be able to move up and down unless I put some thrusters oriented in that direction. So I'll do that now by pressing the insert key. And the same underneath. Like so. Okay, so that is going to allow the spacecraft to go forward and backwards, up and down. The only thing I'm missing now is lateral movement. So if I put one here, and one here, now I've got thrusters in all directions. Now one thing to notice is you should be careful about knocking into your spacecraft until you've got power and stabilizers on it. So I'm going to do that right now. So press the G key and we'll hover over and find out that this one, number three, is the small reactor. Again, in the interest of symmetry, I'm going to try and ensure that I put them symmetrically to keep things balanced. And press G again. The gyroscope is number five. So if I press number five and I add again a couple of gyroscopes. Now if I walk over to my cop fly over to my cockpit and press T, we'll see what's working. Now if I move the mouse around, it automatically rotates the camera, so we don't need to worry about that. If I'm just to press W it goes forward. If I press S, it goes back. If I press A and D. We've got lateral movement and C and space bar. We've got vertical movement. So we've got movement in every direction. And you can see when I let go of the thrust, it automatically stabilizes. That's the stabilizers for you. Now, if we start to fly forward, just keep your eye on the numbers down the bottom right there. I'm holding on the forward key and the power usage is at 42%. So what does that mean? That means that we have, in effect, w more energy being produced than we're actually using. Which is another way of saying we could actually add some thrusters. So where are we going to add them? Well, there's no space here unless we just slap them on top. So what we could do... is stack two like that and then go underneath remember the symmetry just orient myself around a little bit like that now we've got a lot of forward thrust so let's get back in and see what the numbers look like this time now I've got 125% power usage. That means we're not producing enough energy 
for all the thrusters. So we can fix that by adding more generators. Now don't forget this is pure sandbox at the moment. And pure sandbox ma basically means that these components are limitless and free. That will not be the case when this game makes some kind of a final release. Again, as I said before, with Kerbal Space Program recently, you now have missions and the missions have a tech tree uh, and a cost to them because in career mode things are not free. I would expect this game to go roughly in a similar direction but at the moment you can just basically play with everything available. Now you can see the ship goes an awful lot faster. Very quickly we, <laughs> we can crank out to 50 meters per second which is quite quick to be honest. The light ships like these, the small spacecraft, move very, very quickly. The big spacecraft have huge amounts of inertia. It really is noticeable when you fly them around. You'll start to accelerate towards an object and suddenly find that you can't slow down quick enough. So what else can we do? What else have we got on our toolbar? Well, we've got gyroscopes. We don't need gravity generators on this particular ship. Now, we could put a Gatling gun on the side, but as I say, this isn't actually operating, but nevertheless, it does look quite fun. So let's put Gatling guns down the side here and here. And what else have we got? Well, a lot of these components are more applicable to while you're building a space station. You've got internal doors and hangars and pillars, but we should put some landing gear on our spacecraft. So what we'll do is we'll drag that down to slot 9. We'll go underneath, press 9, and we'll put some feet or landing gear. Again, notice the orientation is wrong, so we're going to have to spin that around like so there's the first one put one over here just maybe on the end about there now notice the colored block colors blocks around it yellow means we can't put that there when it goes green that means we can put it down so we need to put it here We'll have another one here like that. Zero to empty our hand, so we don't build anything accidentally. And we now have a minimalist but operational spacecraft. So if we actually fly down here for a moment. And try and make some kind of a landing. Notice the, the feet have gone yellow. Press P and that will lock it. Now we press T to get back out. If we press X to get rid of our jetpack, you'll see because we're under the gravity field of this space station, and you can see on the right gravity is acting downwards, our spacecraft is now locked on the, on the platform of the space station. And if you wanted to, we could actually build it from here. I mean, in some respects, this, this is now easier to build. So if you press key 1, for example... Oh. <laughs> The problem with that is it, it's putting large blocks down because it thinks that we're building here. It thinks that we're building onto the space station, which is a, a much larger unit. But if you walk over here, you'll notice that when you point at your spacecraft, which is a small one, you start to get the smaller blocks. The game is smart enough to know when you point at a particular object, it's smart enough to know what size components to use. Now, what else can we use? Let's press G. We actually have some lights that we can use. Uh, reflector light. So let's drag that down here. Again, it's trying to use the massive lights. And we'll just put some lights, I think. Headlights like that on the front. Let's get back inside the craft. So why didn't the lights come on? Well, if we press K... K brings up the control panel or the terminal. So this is the this is all of the components that are on this space station. And you can see reflector light is currently off, so we'll turn those back on. Reflector light one and two. 
You can see from here you can actually turn the gyroscopes off if you want to. Now that, that's more of an advanced option and I'll probably show you that in a later video. Um, but you can do some really cool things by turning off the gyroscopes. But now you can see super bright lights. So when we actually get back inside the aircraft, press P to release the feet. And you can see we could actually go exploring with forward looking lights. How cool is that? So there is no limit to this game apart from your imagination. But a bit like Space Lego or just Lego in general, you can construct some amazing things, even just given what you have out of the box. But unlike Lego, this game will also allow you to play with physics. And you can actually build yourself moving parts that will spin infinitely. And I'll show you again how to do that in a later video. But this has been a first look. And I shall certainly make some more videos on this game. I think this game is a game to keep your eye on. This is going to be a very fun and very successful game. And I think the initial sales are a pretty good indicator of that. Moddable. So if you like modding, this is definitely a game for you. But this is the end of the first look video. If you did like this and you want to see more, don't forget to click like, leave me a comment. Until the next video, take care guys, see you soon.